So we're here with Zahir Alam from uh, Mauritius. And Zahir is a member of the International Network for Traditional Building Architecture and Urbanism. And in fact, he is the chair of the uh, Small Island Developing States chapter, which is facing some very important challenges of urbanism and uh, many of the things we're talking about here at the conference. Zahir, would you tell us a little bit about your work with uh, INFAL and, uh, and in your home country? Thanks, Michael, for having me. Uh, I'm also the urban planner for the Port Waste Development Initiative where I'm working full time at the moment. And for us, I'd say the biggest challenge is political. <coughs> well, for example, right now we are at the uh, World Urban Forum 9 and we are all talking about policies, strong policies, partnerships, durable partnerships and so on. But truthfully for us, a governmental mandate is four to five years. And all politicians, like they are wherever they are, they are more interested in cutting ribbons. So what uh, for us a challenge is not only having very nicely drafted document, but also having policies that can lead into action. And uh, so we've been seeing that for us, the most difficult part is actually getting things started right away. So our, one of our primary strategies in Mauritius, we don't actually have a master plan as such, or, or an urban uh, policy agenda. We'll, we'll call it like we have an urban agenda. So it's mainly a series of scattered projects around the city, but aligned with the common goal. So that, that's our approach for now. That sounds uh, wonderful. So uh, you've been here, I know, just a couple of days mm. at the conference. Do you have any major takeaways yet or things that you're particularly eager to, uh, to learn more about or share more with others? Yeah, I, I was just out of a conference where they were talking about social housing and pockets of urban poverty. And uh, in Mauritius, we had quite an interesting scenario. Over 95% of people are landowners already, and the rest are living in pockets of urban poverty. We don't really have slums as much as such. And the thing is, some policies are tailored too strongly and too heavily. If we are not into categorizing ourselves into slum, we're not eligible for that technical support or financial support. And for us, we kind of ourselves find in the middle. And yeah, we lose on uh, both incentives and, and, and uh, technical expertise. So for us to, to, work, to work with government uh, patterns, policies, and with foreign bodies that can adapt and be flexible into categorizing us would be really helpful. And we, we have some good co uh, conversations with UN Habitat as well in that regard. Great. Well, I know you and I share an interest in the work of uh, our friend uh, Nikos Salengoros. Uh, who has written a lot about um, the, uh, the sort of tension between top-down and bottom-up, uh, and maybe that's a false tension. Maybe what we need to be talking about is how those things are integrated. I in your work, do you see a, um, a big challenge or a big disconnect, perhaps, in the way um, development is done today? Uh, because I certainly see a lack of ability to harness the bottom-up, uh, harness the the, the informal and self-organizing processes. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, Nikos has been a huge influence on me. Actually, I'm, a, I'm an urban planner because of him. I uh, studied architecture, but then rapidly I didn't want to contribute to modernization and uh, unhealthy. Take the name of Nikos. Take his full name, Nikos so and so okay. Yes, because they might not hear my question. Right. Yeah. 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 Let me re-ask. OK, yeah, uh, just, And then whatever. you can take whichever one boy, when you cut back down. Yep. Uh, so I know you and I both have an interest in the work of uh, the mathematician Nikos Salingaros, who has said some very interesting things about the uh, urbanization process and the difference between bottom up and top down. And maybe the uh, maybe that's a false uh, duality. Maybe we need to be thinking about how bottom up and top down work together. What are your thoughts about how that process kind of? Uh, Works. Yeah, actually, Nikos Salengaros has been a, a massive influence on me and on my background and the choice of career towards urban planning. I study, I actually studied architecture, but uh, after my bachelor's degree, I decided not to pursue architecture. I'm currently doing a PhD in more urban, urban planning setting in Australia, and his approach really opened my eyes on a whole different field on how to merge multidisciplinary approaches into urbanism and when he writes even his academic papers are, which I always admire it's not for an academic audience but a practical approach and he tailors economics urban governance sociology 
and so on on, on different aspects. And it, it makes you see there's a whole new possibility out there that we're not looking at. And that's what we're trying to do back, I'm trying to apply in Mauritius. And one of the facets where it changed my, my view is I'm trying now to implement uh, his idea of scales, fractals, uh, urban economics, society in all our work, and it's, it's opening doors the way we, we didn't see before. One of the interesting things that I'm hearing here at the conference uh, is that what came out of the um, New Urban Agenda, this idea that uh, uh, Jean Claude has talked about, that we, we need a new paradigm, really, coming out of the old uh, Charter of Athens model of um, very top-down, very closed urbanization. We need a more open model, uh, very much like the kind of thing that Nikos Salingaros and others have talked about. Um, what do you think is the challenge now for implementation? We're here a year after the new urban agenda and we have to think about implementation. What are the big yeah. barriers and, and For issues? us, for small island developing states, uh, we are having an event tomorrow and we just had a chat with the moderator and the other participants from the SIDS. We were always talking about <laughs> decentralization. It was kind of funny, I'll share this with you. We're talking about decentralization is key in major cities, metropolis, and so on. But for a small island developing state, it was so small. The entire of Mauritius is smaller than Los Angeles. We are one million people. Our city, main capital city, is 150,000 people, only 47 kilometers square. And even for our size, we talk about decentralization and positive aspects. But then when we, talk, we turned around, we look at Maldives. They don't have rural areas. They're only urban. And they're scattered in small islands. So there are issues connecting their islands. And we look, when we talk to them, they're both the political and econ economic situation. Their only solution is centralization. So context is really, really key. We can't see ourselves looking at one-size-fits-all scenarios and theories. Even po uh, economical context, private sector, public sector, is, it's all different in other places. So we need to calibrate our approach. Much like um, in your writing, so when, when we talk about the, your work in, at CNU, Congress for New Urbanism, calibration is key. It does seem to be the challenge, doesn't it, that we, we can't have one size fits all. That's been the problem uh, with a lot of our urbanization, uh, as, as you see, uh, sometimes it's mm. right here. I think I must be in New York or something. Um, and yet, uh, so we have a lot of different conditions in different urban environments. On the other hand, um, we need some shareable tools and shareable mm. platforms and, and knowledge. So it seems to me that's really... Um, a big uh, challenge that we need to talk about here at the conference. Do you have any final thoughts on that? Yeah. Uh, if you allow me, I'll share a strategy that we're working on in, in Portis right now that m may be useful for other cities. For us, as a small island developing state, again, we're very vulnerable. We lack uh, foreign aid as much as we'd like to. <laughs> That's another issue as well because we, we graduated from least developed to developing countries. So we're not eligible for those uh, both technical and financial expertise. Uh, so what we looked into is how to regenerate the city, but again without a very nicely drafted, we call it action driven, and how can we encourage and really incentivize urban regeneration. So right now, because government doesn't have massive money, both local and uh, municipal government doesn't have money to inject into the capital city, we are looking at drafting a very strong legal and fiscal incentives that will allow developers and really catalyze investment, investment now. So we're looking to turn Porto, the capital city, in, into a special economic zone. For example, what if you're a massive developer? Uh, you are in a very nice cultural site. If you preserve the architectural um, language, aesthetics of the site, you get 40% of tax or custom duties exemption, or even up to eight years tax holiday. So r really, because of your attractiveness to the economic gains of the city, you'll be forced towards one, economic, one side of the of our, of our vision. And we are opening that into really boosting the creative and cultural industries. And another thing is the, because the Lady Mauritius has been looking at smart cities. And uh, government announced that the administrative node will move out of the capital city. But the capital city has always been the cultural side of Mauritius. Those massive, really exciting buildings will be out of function. So we are saying, We'll put eco strong economic incentives to retrofit those buildings for new activities, but still by main maintaining the identity. And I think a strong and uh, legal and fiscal framework would be the only way to do that, but not to do it in five years, do it now, immediately.
this kind of approach, I think, could be scalable and replicated in other cities. And Portis is exact a perfect example for this because of a scale. We're so minute. Whatever we implement now will have uh, uh, an impact in one or two years. Well, I look forward to continuing this discussion in our session and, and on, onward after that. Uh, the Hira alum, thank you very much. Thank you, Michael.